I'm every woman's new best friend. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I do business development consultancy for sex tech companies and at the same time I'm also a sexual wellness advocate. If you think about it, selling sex toys, you know, how many people do you know who actually sell sex toys? For a female and Asian in Singapore, my family, they keep asking me, when am I going to get a proper job? My journey started uh, in December 2013 when I had the medical condition called alopecia. It's an autoimmune disorder whereby the body, um, the immune system decides to attack the hair follicles. And uh, it was a very difficult period for me. Eventually, I had no choice. I had to shave my head. Couldn't recognize who is this person in this mirror. I went away to, um, to Americas and discovered a different way of living. Uh, after six months, I came back, my head grew back. But another thing hit me. Uh, I was diagnosed with endometriosis and I decided that it was enough. You know what? I'm going to look after myself because I have been doing everything that I could to follow the system, to listen to it, you know, listen to my parents, listen to my family, listen to friends, following the people around me and it didn't work out for me. So I decided to take a break, uh, resign from my job and um, I went back to Mexico. The sabbatical from one year became almost two years and a half. It was amazing. It was the best thing I could do for myself. I discovered there were many different ways of living and I continued sharing my story and listening to other people's stories. Alopecia started the journey, triggered everything. I had to learn how to be vulnerable. And from that vulnerability, uh, to discover strength in being vulnerable. And from the strength that I had, I had to learn how to empower myself to have very little fear, to, to go to all these places and try different ways of living. In March 2017, I went to France. I went for a two weeks meditation retreat on mindfulness. And it was there, like I, I saw my life flash past me. The issue I had with my dad you know, in seeking for approval, because, yeah, I, I found out that all issues uh, stem from your childhood, and I saw all this, um, the different kinds of uh, men whom I've uh, uh, had relationships with, uh, you know, they just pass, they flash past my, uh, you know, one morning. I just became aware of my uh, deepest, darkest fear of not being good enough in a romantic relationship. My fear is much more evident in romantic relationships. Due to my relationship with my dad, and it was like a wake-up call. It was another wake-up call, mindfulness, you know. Um, it accelerated the path of uh, self-awareness. How they transform from a, a typical Singaporean, can I say that, mm -hmm. to who I am today, is essentially, um, I'm very proud of being able to transcend the vulnerability to express myself um, more authentically, to be who I am, and do things my own way. I had to practice, you know. When I when I don't like something, I had to learn how to say no. Even to people I love, it's very hard to say no, especially to your parents, to your family members. It's very hard to say no. Um, I, I am enough. I need to take care of myself. I am responsible for myself. I am enough. I only have one life and it's my own life. If I don't take care of myself, no one's going to take care of me. I don't expect anyone else to take care of me. And I tell my mother that, you know, beginning when I got back, I told her that. Uh, she, uh, she asked me, what do you mean by that? You're not going to take care of me? You know, we, yeah, what about filial piety? I was like, mom, are you going to take care of me for the rest of my life? If you are, then okay, maybe we can talk. And she kept quiet. And then after that, right, these days, I, I, I would tell her like, you know, 
uh, it's not that I don't want to take care of you, but let me take care of myself first so that I can have the capacity to take care of you and anything else. And she understands, you know, I've got an amazing family, especially my mom. She's from, um, you know, since it's International Women's Day on the 8th of March, and I think she's one person that I would like to celebrate, right? Um, it's, yeah, I've never thought about, you know, uh, I, I never thought about my mom so much in that way. But in the last 10 years, the transformation that I had to become a typical Singaporean to who I am today, a large part of, a large part of it has to do with my family, especially my mom. Because she is very traditional, but she didn't stop me. She will make noise, okay, don't get me wrong, right? Like any traditional uh, parent. But she didn't stop me from doing whatever I want. Yeah, and even till today, at a grand age of 40, this year I'm going to be 42, you know, she would love for me to get married and have a kid. But all she tells me is that, you know what? As long as you're happy and healthy, that's all I can ask for. I love you, Mom. It took 10 years, you know. It's not an easy journey. I never say it was easy. <laughs> you know, it was never easy. Um, but I will never treat any of that. The challenges I went through in my journey, um, my alopecia, my mindfulness um, practice I discovered, um, the self-awareness that I had. And I'm still learning about myself. When you go through the darkness, then there's light at the end of the tunnel. That's something I believe very much. I had to create a safe space so that more people could come forward and share their stories and ask questions. to open up healthy and authentic dialogues around the topics of sex and sexuality.